Hey, Dan Cochimilio here with NorCal Sports Network with a little special on the wrap-up of the 24 Major League Baseball season and wanted to talk about an article that I was reading about Jim Bowden, former general manager of the Cincinnati Reds. He's got an article out in The Athletic about 25 bold predictions for the off season this year. He calls it, here are some of my 25 bold and not so bold predictions for this off season. That actually got started yesterday with the trade already, a trade of ex-Giants player Jorge Soler, who was traded at the trade deadline to the Atlanta Braves. Now the Atlanta Braves on the first day of the off season make a deal with the LA Angels and send Soler over to the Angels for a pitcher back into the rotation pitcher uh, Canning, I believe his last name. Anyway, he will be a pretty good starter for the Braves. Good move for the Braves who turn Soler around. Um, Bowden was actually pretty complimentary of the Giants getting rid of the contract of Soler. But the Giants really didn't get much. They got the minor leaguer, um, the the slugger. His name uh, escapes my mind right now, but the uh, power hitting Sabalas, I believe it is. Sabalas. We'll see if he becomes a major leaguer or not. But the general manager or president of baseball ops, Andropolis, over at Atlanta, actually gets a starting pitcher, major league caliber pitcher, for Soler, you think Farhan might have been able to do something like that last year. But anyway, that is no longer an issue since Farhan is no longer with the Giants. But let me get into this. Before we get into this video, I want to mention this show is uh, sponsored by Chapman Law Group. If you would give Chapman Law Group one of our who's a proud sponsor of NorCal Sports Network, give them a call. Their description, 415-613-9043. The description of what Chapman Law Group does is you can read about them in this uh, particular video. Check out the description for Chapman Law Group. All right, let's get right into Jim Bowden's <clears throat> top 25, some bold and not so bold predictions for this off season. Oh, by the way, today is November 1st and the anniversary of the Giants' first World Series championship in Texas, winning game five, three to one, with a strikeout from Brian Wilson to strike out the last batter for the Rangers, and the Giants won their first ever World Series title in San Francisco. So November 1st, 2010, today, 14-year anniversary of the Giants winning it all. All right, let's get into these 25 predictions by Jim Bowden. His first prediction is that the Yankees match the Mets and Dodgers' best offers for Juan Soto signing him to a $622 million contract that keeps the Soto-Aaron Judge tandem in New York for years to come. His second prediction, the Mets focus, and this is what I want the Giants to do, but he says the Mets focus will focus on starting pitching and free agency and manage to sign both Corbin Burns and Max Freed to long-term contracts while also bringing back Pete Alonso. Number three, Roki Sasaki is says he does not get posted by his team, the Chiba Latte Marines in Japan. And the talented Japanese righty has to wait another year to become a free agent and join the major leagues, disappointing the Dodgers, among other teams who wanted to sign him this offseason. Number four, the Dodgers signed shortstop Willie Adamas to a six-year, $150 million deal. The rich get richer, and they also re-signed left fielder Teoscar Hernandez 
for three years, $75 million, and right-handed pitcher Walker Bueller to a two-year deal with a club option with about a $12 million base salary. That's number four. Number five, according to Jim Bowden, the Astros signed center fielder Cody Bellinger after he opts out of his contract with the Cubs to a four-year, $112 million pack. Houston also, interestingly, re-signs third baseman Alex Bregman for seven years, 188. Interesting because Matt Chapman got six years at 151. So obviously when Matt Chapman was signed to that deal, that instantly made Alex Bregman a minimum of six years for over 150. And I think Jim Bowden's right on it here that I don't know if he stays with the Astros, but Bregman will definitely get six years north of 150. And maybe he gets that seventh year. He's a, definitely a more productive player than Matt Chapman. So Matt Chapman, definitely, when he signed, you knew that Alex Bregman was very thankful probably sent him a nice gift because that definitely made big time money for Bregman. His sixth prediction or bold prediction, lefty Tanner Scott signs a four year, $60 million deal with the Phillies who say goodbye to high leverage relievers, Jeff Hoffman and Carlos Estevez in free agency. All right. Number seven, the Nationals, Inc. Outfielder Anthony Sandandera for six years, $142 million, landing the power bat in the first big signing of a rebuild in a deal that's reminiscent of their past signing of Jason Wirth. Okay, number eight, the Guardians are able to bring back ace Shane Bieber and also sign veteran righty Michael Waka for three years and 45 million. So who's going to fill in that spot when if Waka leaves? According to Jim Bowden, his ninth prediction is that the Royals sign lefty Sean Manaya to a three-year, $68 million deal to replace Waka. Wow. So number 10, the Mariners sign first baseman Christian Walker. Three years, 72 million. Wow. Walker is uh, 34 years of age. I think if he doesn't sign a big long-term deal, if he's into a one- or two-year deal, I think that would be a great move for the Giants. If, you know, especially if it's a one-year deal. Christian Walker, I would I would pay Christian Walker $30 million for one year just to have a bat, a first baseman with some pop. Walker can definitely hit you 30-plus homers. So... <clears throat> Bowden has the Mariners, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, signing Christian Walker three years. <clears throat> and he also says that they land Brandon Lowe after Tampa Bay doesn't pick up his option. So, and Jim Bowden, you know, no one's going to be right on all these. It's impossible to nail these, but these are just interesting things to talk about. And um, Bowden has a pretty good handle on you know being a former GM and he stays in the game he's very on top of it works uh, you know he's on MLB radio as well so i like listening to jim bowden and i like his takes and i think these are interesting starters to get going so number 11 the padres re-signed both left fielder jerks and profar and shortstop hasan kim as a opt to run it back with largely the same team in 25. Number 12, the Red Sox signed righty Jack Flaherty to a three-year, $68 million deal, and lefty, uh, who say Kikuchi, Kikuchi to a three-year deal. The Giants should go after both these guys, in my opinion, or they should go after the next guy, Nathan Avaldi, who Bowden brings up. I think the Giants... If if I'm the Giants this year, <clears throat> what I would do is I would go after Corbin Burns and um, Corbin Burns and and uh, Blake Snell. Re try and get Blake Snell back, and go after 
someone like a Walker Bueller or a Nathan Avaldi or a Jack Flaherty get three starting pitchers, okay, and really stack up that bullpen. And if you want to keep Logan Webb, then you've got the best starting pitching staff in baseball, along with Robbie Ray. You've got five really good starters. But the other option is go out and sign three high quality top in, you know, your aces in Snell and, and Burns. You have two solid aces who are both better pitchers than Webb. And then you got Robbie Ray coming back. You could actually trade Logan Webb, who's got a very great contract that teams would love. And you could pick up some top talent for Logan Webb, someone like to the Orioles, who, you know, who's got some great young talent that you can step in. Top 100 prospects that are ready to play or were top 100 prospects just last year and are now graduated and are up with the big club. So this is what I want to see the Giants do is go get pitching and then use their new you know, Zach Manassian, who is announced as the new GM, go out and get some players and your best guy. And I know the Giants will never do this, and it's controversial. I love Logan Webb. Nothing against Logan Webb. He's a great player. He's a great ambassador for the team. He's a leader. But he's also the only value the Giants really have of bringing back pieces that can rebuild this club. I mean, you got Bryce Eldridge. You're not going to trade him. You're not going to trade Ramos. I guess you could look at moving Matos or Luciano, but I'd like to see the Giants not give up on those guys yet. I'd like to see Matos in the lineup, Luciano in the lineup. They're young. Let's see if these guys can hit. Go out and get some young guys and then build your pitching. Look, you can't get pitchers. I mean, hitters, you cannot get hitters, free agent hitters to come to San Francisco. And you're not developing many. Go get other people who develop great hitters and do what you do best. You get pitchers that love to pitch in San Francisco. It, it uh, you know, revitalizes careers like Kevin Gosman. And look at what Gosman parlayed his deal into a big five-year, $110 million deal with Toronto. And then what Rodon did, he was able to parlay his great year with the Giants into a huge contract with the Yankees. So pitchers love to come. Hitters, no. They're not coming to San Francisco because it's where careers numbers go to die. Okay, uh, People are not going to – Juan Soto, I don't believe, is coming to the Giants unless the Giants give a massive – they're so much higher than everybody else that Soto just wants the money. But I think Soto – looks at that right field porch in Yankee Stadium, and he, if he averages like 35 homers a year for the next 13 years, he's going to pass Ken Griffey Jr. on the all-time list and have over 630 homers, okay? Not going to do that in San Francisco. If he comes to San Francisco, he's not going to reach his 600 homers. So that's my plan for what the Giants should do. And – He's already saying the Mets are going to do it. They're going to go out and get Burns. And who did he say? Um, the top two pitchers he was looking at, Burns and Free. That's right. Okay, so we move on to number 13, 12. We just talked about Jack Flaherty signing with the Red Sox. 13, he says the Rangers re-signed Nathan Avaldi. To a two-year, forty million dollar, forty-two million dollar deal, with a club option and land reliever Carlos Estevez from the Phillies, formerly with the Angels. Number fourteen, the Tigers signed right-hander Nick Martinez. Martinez pitched really well down the stretch for the Cincinnati Reds. So, he's saying the Tigers go after Nick Martinez. Number 15, here's a – Giants aren't going to like this, Giants fans. The Orioles, Inc., blank – Blake – not blank. Yeah, he is blank, Snell. He blanks uh, teams. But Blake Snell signs with the Orioles to a three-year, $105 million deal and then trade three strong prospects to the A's for flame-throwing closer Mason Miller, whom they convert back to a starting pitcher. That's a bold take. That's a – that's – as he said, some of these are bold and not so bold. That's a bold take. 
16. After exercising his $22.5 million player option, Jordan Montgomery is traded by the D-backs to the Braves for two minor league pitchers while Arizona agreeing to pay half of his salary. Yeah, we know that the owner of the Diamondbacks does not want Jordan Montgomery back. So Montgomery probably opts in, though, because he's not going to get the money where, where else he's going to get it on the open market. Not after he had that crappy year last year. So we'll see where this goes. Number 17, the D-backs exercised their $15 million club option on third baseman Eugenio Suarez, bringing him back. Number 18, Charlie Morton announces his retirement from baseball after 17 seasons. 19, the Pirates sign outfielders Tyler O'Neill and Jock Peterson, adding veteran offense to their lineup. Jock, man, the guy's all over the place. And number 20, for the second year in a row, no players accept the qualifying offer. 21, Arichio Ichiro Suzuki is elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's not so bold in his first year on the ballot. That's a no-brainer. Billy Wagner is elected in the 10th and final year on the ballot. And Andrew Jones, the greatest defensive fielder he's ever seen, also gets the call to Cooperstown. 22, the Rays start the season playing in the Blue Jays Spring Training Complex in Dunedin, Florida, staying until a fix is in place for the Tropicana field roof to make the ballpark playable again. 23. Okay, this one, pretty easy. I think most baseball experts would agree with this. Aaron Judge and Shohei Otani are named their MVPs of their respective leagues, and Tariq Skubal and Chris Sale win the Cy Young Awards. Yeah, I think that's a lock. Um, this one is up in the air. 24, Louis Giel and Paul Skeens win Rookie of the Year honors. And he says, once again, I once again complain about there not being dedicated awards for the best rookie pitcher and the best rookie position player. As two of Colton Kowser, Austin Wells, Jackson Merrill, and Jackson Churio should have been recognized for their strong seasons. Yeah. I mean, definitely Jackson Merrill and Churio were great. Merrill was more consistent all year long. And then his final prediction is Stephen Boat of the Guardians and Pat Murphy of the Brewers are named managers of the year. So for their leagues. So that's the uh, wrap up from Jim Bowden. We'll see how many of these come true. It's going to be a fun off season. We'll be covering it for you all off season here on NorCal Sports Network. Make sure you catch us. We're live almost every day, whether it's talking Giants baseball Golden State Warriors basketball, San Francisco 49ers football, Breeders' Cup, which we got going tomorrow. The big Breeders' Cup action starts uh, actually today and a big one tomorrow on Saturday. But, guys, uh, tonight, don't forget to join. We'll be back here on NorCal Sports Network at 9 o'clock tonight with – Special guest Dieter Kurtenbach, and we will talk about the Giants' new GM, Zach Manazian, as he gets hired by Buster Posey in his first major move. He hires Zach Manazian, who is director of pro scouting for the San Francisco Giants, hired by Farhan Zaidi in 2019, also held that title with the Milwaukee Brewers for several years. So we'll get a breakdown on that tonight. And we'll hear from Dieter Kurtenbach. So don't forget to join us at 9 o'clock tonight. And guys, um, if you like this channel, comment or on this video. Comment on the video on the comments section. And uh, really would appreciate if you guys uh, hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like video. Subscribe to the channel. We're growing. We've added about 500 subs here in just over the last month. and um, we're getting more and more people hearing about NorCal Sports Network. As they know, there's many places to go for content. Uh, Giants, we think we've got some of the best Giants content out there in uh, the YouTube space. So uh, please give this a like and subscribe to the video if you would. And again, we'll see you tonight, hopefully, at 9 o'clock. Take care, everybody.